Hello everyone and welcome once again to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide. It's week 16 in 2021 and as you can see in the background we are at Catalonia in Clio V6s. Let's have a look at the race details first of all. We're racing three laps here at Catalonia. We're in a grid start. We are on sports hard tyres. Now this car is all about not overdriving. So smooth operator is the way to go here. Let's jump to the race then. I'll sort you through some tips tricks uh, a lap guide of course and uh, let's have a look at some of the touring car-esque action here we are then at the start so obviously only clio v6s uh, only nine people made it in weirdly three people got disconnected i have no idea what's happening but each and every week i don't know if you guys have noticed this seem to have server issues so no idea what's going on but here we are starting in p8 now try to control on one of course we're going to set off here. We're going to white track control off. And then um, I accidentally changed gear rather than white track control off. Weirdly. So my mistake. But make sure you turn track control off. Then change gear. And make sure you change gear near the rev limiter. Okay. Don't do what I did there. Anyway, we're going to head towards turn number one here. It's going to get very close very quickly here. Because uh, we have key in front of us. Uh, as we head in to the braking zone. And uh, it's all fairly nice, to be honest. I mean, there's a lot of rubbing going on. Um, in fact, some people in this race rub a lot more than others do. But even so, we're going through here. And I'm just aiming to try and get on the inside here. I know a lot of people are going to run wide here. People are going to be in the wrong gear. And I didn't have very much time to do anything before this race. I had two minutes because uh, first piece of me merch has just arrived. Anyway, in towards the braking zone we go. And we're going to keep it tight as possible. Somebody went really wide there. I didn't see who that was. That was Tilbs, actually. Just noticed on the left-hand side. But look at all those arrows on the radar. So I'm thinking, right, okay, can we follow a key? through here not quite on the outside here uh and uh, we can't really do much unfortunately and then we're gonna lose a whole lot of positions we get absolutely tapped on the rear end there and uh we're just gonna survive this hopefully as we head towards this fast left hand they're very scared to go too wide here till just doesn't see me there unfortunately uh and we're gonna lose all those positions we started p8 we're back in p8 although we go back up to p7 you can see quite quickly there's a lot of movement and people are a little bit all over the place uh including ourselves to be honest with you uh, but it's been fairly clean in the grand scheme of it. And I think most people will try and stay clean. Now, you may have just seen Key in the distance there running slightly wide. If you do run wide on that corner, as in go too far over the curb, you will get a penalty, as you can see in the distance there. Now, in towards this braking zone, we got a little bit too deep, but I was concerned about behind as well, which is why I did it this time round. Uh, and you can see on the radar, still two by two, three wide potentially, uh, as we're going to fast forward a little bit further here. As you can see, some action here between the German and the Italian. Uh, and they have a bit of a rubbings racing moment there. It's this very touring car esque. Unfortunately, the German has a penalty. I'm pretty sure that's a shortcut penalty. And we try and go down the inside of the Italian. Now, weirdly, the Italian starts pushing me here. He's just, he's just got enough of a clear room here. And he starts, but you can see he's pushing me. I'm turning left now at this point. I'm like, no, don't do that. And I really start turning left. Like, no, don't do that. Uh, unfortunately, Slipstream takes over then. So he gets the position there from pushing. So that's what I mean about. Some people rubbing a lot more than others as uh, we go into this turn. And then a little bit more rubbing there to boot. Um, but I don't think they were trying to race. I uh, See, this is my always argument where are they trying to be dirty or are they just their version of racing? Because they do leave gaps, you know. It's not like they're absolutely annihilating people. It's very weird. Like, I don't know. Dif different opinions and feelings, different kind of driving. I don't know. But anyway, we lose another position here with all that action to Tills. But uh, we're on the inside, so we're trying to keep this position... Um, unfortunately, Tilbs, I think, may have just rubbed against us there. I mean, we're on the inside. We couldn't go any more to the road to the right. So we're looking to try and get this move done and dusted. We go over to the left. Now, this is we make a little mistake here. I didn't realize Tilbs' nose was just there. But Tilbs backed out of it. Uh, and we're just going to get back up into P, Steve, for now. But a lot of action. You've seen a heck of a lot of action this early on. But you lose so much time with the action. If you, you kind of like this kind of racing, it's a good combo for you. Personally, I was just finding it a little bit frustrating that there was constant overtakes. Um, and generally speaking, I had a lot better of a run out of corners than most people, as you saw there with Billy. And as I say, look, Billy gave me enough space there. So it's just different opinions for the racing. I honestly don't know, but the Germans got a penalty here. So we're going to overtake them. And I was concerned about any dives after what I saw at turn one. So I wanted to break late here, but I broke a little bit too late. As you're about to see here, I'm just trying to get the car stopped. And unfortunately, we have four cars on the radar. Now, uh, there, Billy actually got pushed into me. That wasn't actually Billy's fault. I didn't see who hit Billy, but uh, even so, pretty crazy. We're going to the final lap then. We're going to go into this track guide just to give you a bit of hints and tips on how to do this and try and get the best out of the car. Into towards turn one. Look for that flag marker on the left-hand side there. Nice, easy spot. 
There is a gap in the barrier on the right hand side you can look for as well. Now, I use that if you want to use that, but the one on the left is much better here. Now, third gear is your best friend on this combo. It really is. So, I recommend staying in third as much as you can. It'll keep the car very settled. What you kind of find is if you're high in the revs, the rear starts to come out. So, just be careful of it. Now, this corner, you want to stay on the inside. And again, stay in third gear. You'll see some people changing gear too early. And then you'll see the rear come out a little bit with that weight transfer. Just keep it nice and stable. Smooth operator, as I say. Now, as you head towards this right-hander here, you can notice how we have a big shadow and then a light little bit there that I've highlighted. Use that as your marker. I mean, you could use a, the gantry above as well. Uh, but you notice they actually uh, break a little bit earlier than me. Uh, but you can actually break where I said you could break. It's absolutely fine. Um, amazingly, as we leave this corner on the inside, uh, there's another brake marker here. Finally, we have a brake marker because of the time of day. That shadow there, lovely little marker. You can just see I'm going on the brakes now. And um, yes, you can use that as your marker here and drop to third gear. And uh, we're going to go around. So I dropped to second because I'm taking a wider line. Well, we get through there fine. You can do that third gear. Happy days. Trust me, third gear is your best friend here. So finally, we make up a position up into P Tolly now. And this is our normal brake marker here. So yeah, to the start of that curb there, you're going to brake. Just don't go too wide. Obviously, this is the FIA track on Wednesday. So some of these markers you're going to use there as well. So just to start the curb there and uh, get on the inside third gear and then try and accelerate through nice and easy there bob's your uncle right up in towards the right hander and it's the end of the curb once again now i always say here don't break if you don't have to break okay so if you feel you can do it without breaking do it because trust me it's worthwhile and notice i'm up into fourth gear just as i turned in there this was something i was trying out you can do it but you're gonna get a bit more understeer so just be careful of that third gear is your best friend as i say fourth gear is a bit pushy in there now, the flag marker is actually your normal brake marker, uh, normally in any category. And it's the same here in the Clio V6. It's down the right hand side. I've highlighted it. So it's a bit, a bit harder to see this daylight on the video, but it's much more pronounced when you're racing. Second gear here, not third gear. It's the only time I really go to second gear. And then out of there, third gear. Now, as you head up to here, again, you're just going to dab the brakes. You sort of let the car roll. Let the car do its thing. Just roll around the corner and it'll be fine, honestly. Don't go too aggressive with this car. Just head towards this right-hander. There's that big black mark on the curb there. As it comes onto the curb is when you start braking. As it finishes is when you turn in. I know a few of you always ask for turning markers. That's the perfect one for you there. And you kind of use that sausage a little bit on the right. Finally, the chicane then. The gantry at the top. That's what you're after using here. You're going to go on the brakes. Try and straight line this as best you can. And then turn in. I prefer third gear. I was trying it in second in this situation. But I feel like you lose a little bit too much speed in second gear. I think you can do it in third, but do have a play with that one. I think that's going to be very much personal preference. But that's going to be it for race A. As I say, very touring car-esque if you do like this kind of driving. This is probably a good week for you. However, it's not the best for me personally. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it here for me. Uh, Key was streaming this earlier on as well. So do check out his, in the description his channel. But let's head to race B. Where we're at Sardinia, specifically Road Track C in reverse. Now, I'm pretty sure we've done this combo before in daily races. I know we've done a fair few combos, but this is one of the more unusual ones that I think we have done before. But even so, let's have a look at the race details first of all. We're racing seven laps here at Sardinia. It's a rolling start, and we are on the racing hard tyre. Now, with the racing hard tyre... This means we have a lot of wheel spin. And as you can see in the background, we are in the Group 4 FF cars. They are the best, even with the wheel spin, weirdly. So you're going to have to be careful of that understeer. Let's jump to the race then. I'll talk you through some tips, tricks, a lap guide, and we'll just see how the racing is. Spoiler warning, it's not very good. Here we are then at the start. As you see, Shiraco, 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 then RCZ, RCZ. I mean, Troy Lee picks an Aston, so fair play. We have Sleepy Panda in the Nissan, but obviously everything else is FF. And we're in the RCZ because that was top of the leaderboards at the time. So as you know, I try and pick the car that is at the top of the leaderboards because that's more than likely what you're going to pick. Everyone always goes for the meta, so let's pick the meta at the time. Well, we're going to start with this rolling start, which you don't have to worry about. Everybody's on the start, finish straight, and happy days. Just be careful when you start in an FF car, you'll get wheel spin. You know, I mentioned about this in the intro. So change gear quite early at the rolling start. First to second, quite quickly, you'll avoid that wheel spin and you will catch a little bit up to the cars up ahead. You know, it's turn one. The uh, pressure up ahead goes for a little bit of dive on found Shelty. We've found him again! We've found Shelty! Finally! We keep losing Shelty and... Oh, we've just lost Shelty again. Goodbye, Shelty! Bye-bye! 
<laughs> how we carry on. Anyway, we're going to fast forward a little bit further on uh, because there was a little bit of a gap there. So we're going to look for the move on the Peugeot, but it's not the best place to make a move. So I sort of half back out of that one uh, and I'll just try and get it settled for the start. Finish straight here. Notice how we gain a huge amount of momentum there because we took a much wider line. We're going to do a bit of slip streaming here because that's the best thing to do. It really, really is. Uh, and then just overtake at the corner. So you can see here, pushing and pushing, pushing along. And then when I feel satisfactory, I just cross the line. I'm going to go towards the inside and try and outbreak them into turn one. I don't worry, I'll tell you where to break shortly. I'm sure you can guess. Um, they turned in a little bit there, but that's just, that's just racing. That was a racing instant. Nothing major. Nothing wrong with that at all. But we are going to have a bit of a racing action here. I mean, I said it wasn't good, the racing. Uh, and I, I'll tell you what I mean in a second. But this was kind of interesting. I was expecting one of us to die here, but we managed to survive. I suspect without me lifting there, we would have both died. But, uh, you know, I did the smart thing there and lifted. Unfortunately, the Spaniard just goes off there. And uh, Pound Chelty is back. So it's going to go down the inside here. And then I'm going to lift because there's no point fighting this. And then we're going to carry on racing. So in terms of when I met, say the racing is good or bad, as you can see, we're already on lap three. The gap to leader, nearly 10 seconds. What I mean by the racing is not that very good. You're going to struggle to have any serious amount of racing in this because there's very few corners you break for. So the minute you start fighting, you lose so much time that you lose out. You'll notice a lot of packs are in pairs uh, as we look at Lost Shelty, but we just might get a little, a little bit. A little lost, uh, lost Shelty. It's found Shelty, Tidge. Found Shelty. Found Shelty goes a little bit too deep there, uh, but they're going to have to run out of that corner and we're just going to pull in behind. Uh, I'm not going to go for a move here as well, but you notice this pair. We've got another pair up ahead and there's a bit of a bigger group ahead of them. Um, so that's what you'll find in this race, basically. It's just set up in a pair, and then you might find it not as good as, say, race A, for example. As we come through here, then, and uh, found Shelty. Unfortunately, about to get lost, I'm afraid. Oh, no, stays on, stays on. But I'm going to go for the move all the same because of that. Uh, and Shelty actually does what I did earlier, which is just back out of it and uh, hope to fight another day. So, you know, some smart racing there as well. You can see the Dutch and the Spanish drivers up ahead, but we're actually going to advance from lap four all the way to the final lap. Yes, that's right. There's not that much action. That's what I mean by this race. Anyway, we're going to head towards turn one. Where do you think this brake marker is? We have look at the left-hand side. We have an ambulance. Forget white van man. This is ambulance man or woman. Right on the left-hand side, you're braking just before this. And then you're going to really step on the anchors, get down to second gear. Try and get it turned in and turned as fast as you can so you can get on the accelerator because you will suffer some wheel spin as you start to straight line a little bit there. And you saw that Spaniard there. Off in Narnia. Right, okay, through here. Just be careful here. So you try and get to the left as best as you can. You might want to lift here just a little bit. You know, side lift a little bit there. That's just safety. Uh, and as you head towards this fast right-hander, don't go aggressive. Break a little bit early here. So as that curve touches the main part of the circuit, that's your marker. That's what I use here. You could probably use the barrier on the left, to be honest. But I was just using this curve and brake. And then I just want to get the car turned in so I can accelerate through the corner. There's been a big accident up ahead. Uh, with the Aston there, unfortunately, and a Scirocco here. So let's see what we can do heading into the final sector here. Uh, can't make a move there, but as you go into the braking zone, it's the end of the curb I use as a marker there. Now, you want to be as far left as possible. So that's really why I use this as a marker, because you want a really good run out the corner. So slow in, fast out. They get it slightly wrong here, so I have to really back out of this, unfortunately. But I think if they didn't make that mistake, I would have had the position where they then mistake, saved them. Uh, but even so, we're going to head towards the line here. And, uh, oh, they're going to lift off here, weirdly. Oh, we're going to get a position. Got hit towards the line. 1,000th, apparently. Let's have a look on here. Oh, no, it's a bit, a bit longer than that. Well, there we go. 11,000th. So it was close enough. But, uh, yeah, race, race B, not that good, if I'm honest. I'm, yeah, I'm not interested. Anyway, let's head to race C, which is uh, a little bit interesting. Yes, it's Tokyo. <laughs> yes, we have a full slipstream fest here going on. Specifically, it's East Outer Loop, which we haven't done for a little while. So a nice little change, I suppose. But let's have a look at the race details, first of all. We're racing 10 laps here at Tokyo. It's a rolling start, but as you know, the start-finish rate is three years long, so don't worry about corners. Uh, racing soft and medium are both required. Fuel usage times two, and tire wear is times nine. Now, as you can see in the background, it is group three. Specifically, most people are picking the F1 GTR because, let's be honest, it's so stupidly quick in a straight line. Not even superly, stupidly quick in a straight line. And... Yeah, it's an all right car in handling as well. So that's what we pick. Let's head to the race then and let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. 
Here we are then at the start. I see a Corvette on pole there. That's Dot Brown. Shout out to you. Shout out to anyone in this race. It's quite an interesting race. We've got mamas in there. Du, du, du. No, we won't do that. Don't worry. Uh, but we did actually put a lap time in. I know you guys said put a lap time in, so I did. Uh, it could have been a lot faster, to be honest. I only did three laps, four laps. I did it with race B as well, and I only did two laps there. So uh, that's what I'm going to do from now on. I'll just put a couple of laps in. Uh, but as you see, we start on the start-finish straight. It's three years long, so you don't have to worry about anything here. Uh, we are going to go straight into the track guide as well on this lap one, mainly because it is a slipstream fest and it starts to get a little bit tasty as we go through the race. Now, I've started on mediums here, mainly because if anyone's on softs in front of me, they're going to carry me along, slipstream fest. Uh, and if anyone's on softs behind me, I'll let them overtake and I'll let them carry me along down the straights. So it's a win-win in either situation. So I'm going to warm up my tyres first of all. Remember, when there's tyre wear, there's always... Uh, temps as well, so get them warmed up a little bit. Head towards turn one though, you're going to look for the 100 meter board. Now all these marks I'm pointing out will depend on how close to them you want to be, depending on tyre wear, compound tyre, etc. But look out for that 100 meter board. If you're braking on it, you're braking too late. Now obviously with slipstream, you're going to have to brake earlier than that, but uh, it's generally between 150 and 100. This turn, this right hander here, uh, basically as the red and uh, white arrow sign starts there, you're going to want to just turn in. Now, I dabbed the brake a little bit there, but you don't have to. You can just let the car roll. It should be fine. And I do that in fourth gear in the McLaren on either tyre compound. Then we have this really fast section here. Fast left into a fast right. And then the chicane. Uh, we could argue a chicane of death here. But uh, we're going to try and get it towards the right as best as we can. And I've got three markers here for you. So uh, first of all, the red, and, uh, the red and white. The white marker in front. You've got the lamppost on the left. You want to break a bit later. Or the 50 meter board if you want to go super late. As I marked all three there. So you're going to have to pick and choose that. And it's going to vary with slipstream and all sorts. So you're going to have to be so, so careful here. As I say, I'm just picking out markers for you. Because... Yeah, that's the only thing I can do, really. You just lift at the bridge there. Uh, for this left-hander, lift at 50 meters and just turn in. And then when you're happy, you can carry on accelerating. And I'm going to get to our next brake mark here, which is going to be the 50-meter board. Now, you can brake on it, to be honest with you. Um, if you brake after it, though, you're risking the barrier wall. Uh, barrier wall? Or the barrier hit. Uh, I will be honest there. But let's get it turned in. Lovely jubbly. And then this one, you might want to slightly lift a little bit. Make sure you turn in and it's just flat out. Nice and easy. Do not break for that left-hander. You will cause carnage if you break for that left-hander. I'm telling you that now. Now head towards the hairpin where it's going to be dive bomb central. On the right hand side, you'll notice that little light silver thing there. That's in between the 150 and 100. There is one between the 200 and 150, so be careful. Make sure you pass the 150 and then look for it. Uh, and that's what you can use as a brake marker. Happy days. We get the car stopped. Round we go. And then accelerate out. And then that's it. That's the lap guide. Nice and easy. Job done. Now, obviously, this is where the race gets interesting. As I always say with a race like this, it's all about racing smart here. But what we find is that people don't want to race smart. So here is smart of me to overtake the Corvette because the McLaren is so much faster in a straight line. It doesn't benefit me in the slightest staying behind the Corvette. It actually benefits Dot Brown more from being behind me. So in we go, and uh, Crypto's just gone a little bit deep there. Comes back, and uh, just a little tag there, nothing major. In towards the right-hander we go. At this point, I'm slightly worried we're going to lose the uh, the train there, but uh, we get it all settled, and we're going to advance a bit further on, as you can see here. So lap three, look at this. We've got a lot of fighting going on here, and I was so confused with what was going on. I was like, hmm, okay. You know, you've got people behind potentially doing different strategies. If you look at the map... There's a Quinton there that's uh, just pitted. Let's put it that way. So three we go and still a lot of fighting going on. At this point, because we're all side by side, we're not really losing anything. So uh, unfortunately, the German just didn't realize I was there. So we're going to just fall in behind, hopefully. Go on, fall in, fall in, Titch, fall in. No, not quite. We're going to go side by side instead. And uh, yeah, this is dangerous. This is not what I would want to do. So I back out of this, thankfully. And then we can continue on. Happy days. Oh, a little tag in the barrier there. That's not good. But uh, yes, what you should do is fall in line. There's no point doing it on lap three, fighting like ridiculously hard. It's why I gave up on the chicane. I should have probably given up before that because it's just going to cause issues. You don't want to lose the train ahead. You want to be at the forefront of this. Unfortunately, we had a bit of lag there with Cyberman, uh, but I think Cyberman just lets me go here. And then uh, it all just gets a little bit weird. It hit the barrier and then, yeah, just all weird this lap. Lap three was weird. So at this point, I decided I was coming in the pits. I've got to be honest. I was like, mm, yeah, I'm coming in. I want to get out of this. I did see somebody had pitted. I didn't know it was Quinton at the time. I knew somebody had pitted. I was like, let's just try it. Let's go for it. Anyway, into the breaking zone we go. And you're going to see a Lambo come down and overtake two people and just tap me there as well. Now, I know that was a mistake because I'm pretty sure they lifted here to let me go. 
And then we go to the left here. Somebody was in the barrier there. And then they hit uh, the McLaren to the right of me. And then I'm on sort of the left here. But I was happy because I'm on the left. I'm going in the pits. I already knew I was going in the pits. I just wanted to get in and get away from that pack up ahead. Uh, because I knew we could probably jump them. Um, so into the pits we go then. So mediums to sauce. Now there's no point me putting a, a pit time loss on here. Because it's a bit weird. As you see, Quinton is just firing by there because... He's been on his own and he's managed to put a good lap in. But you can see the overspeed as well. Where would I measure the pit stop time? I'm not really sure. It's a bit of a weird one, to be honest. So don't worry too much about the pit stop time. Just make sure you get in, get some nice brand new boots on, and then off you go. So you can stop on lap three, four, or five, to be honest, on the mediums. Um, obviously, with the slipstream, you're not worrying too much. Or unless you do what I did there and just run a little bit too deep. Lambo goes in front of me, so I think, fine, we'll just stick behind the Lambo for now, going into a handling section. Unfortunately, the Lambo just hits the barrier there, so I'm like, mm, okay, well, I'll go back in front then. Um, I was worried if I'd hit in there, I'd get a penalty because there's such a speed difference. Um, to continue on here, you see the Lambo is behind me. In towards the braking, we go, and I was a little bit frustrated with this one. Obviously, everyone can race their own race. It was just my personal opinion at the time. I was like, oh, why go for the move? It's going to cost us a bit of time here because, obviously, we've got to take the corner in a very inefficient way. And then look, everybody's just coming the pits. I was like, no, we could have jumped everybody. So I was like, okay, let's just bumper draft him. I think maybe I should have gone for the overtake here. I don't know. It's kind of a weird situation, but we stay behind. We try and bumper draft the Lambo because I knew about it. I was like, we need to get past everybody here. It's the only way. It's all about racing smart at this point. Trying to get away from the pack. So you can see everybody coming out here. Just see Consta in the distance. And then we've got Crypto Racer as well. Uh, a little bit of a lag bump there. So he got a real boost there in the Lamborghini. So we pass Crypto Racer, and then we've got Cyberman. So at this point, I'm like, mm, okay, we're going to have a real big overrun here. So I can go for the move here because we're going to be in the slipstream of Cyberman. We lose nothing. No time lost there with that overtake. Smart overtake, in my opinion. Uh, so we then chuck it down the inside. Lambo goes around the outside. Very brave move. Uh, and initially, I was uh, frustrated again. But actually, this is a really good move because the Lambo lost no time at all there. We're still in the slipstream. Anyway, we've got a lap later. And uh, we're going to get the move done on the Lambo now. Because, of course, the Lambo is no match for this McLaren. So we go towards the left-hand side. Again, we're not going to lose that much time here. Because they're up ahead. We're not losing anything. And uh, we're going to be in slipstream now. And we're past. So we're going to pass the German who we were racing earlier on. So they're going to be on nice, fresh tyres as uh, we continue on. And obviously, they're going to be on the mediums now. They've been on the softs for quite a while. Uh, and you can see all the battling up ahead. I'm so confused by the, the crazy battling that was going on. Uh, I, I think Momoz was a major part of that as well because everyone was commenting to Momoz about nice drafting. I don't really know, to be honest. Anyway, we continue up here. Yellow flag. I did wonder what had gone on here. See, three wide once again into the hairpin. And you're going to have this a lot, folks. That's just why I'm showing it because that is going to happen a lot. People wanting to dive down the inside, thinking they're the quickest thing since sliced bread when in fact they're probably not it's just slipstream helping them along the way so throughout this race at this point i'm just looking after my tires knowing i came in earlier on i just wanted to look after them you know make sure the tires survive and i could continue racing so we're approaching three cars side by side here and i was deciding whether to bumper draft or not but i thought do you know what i've got such an overspeed here that i could overtake all four and i'll be passed and then i was hoping i would get the next slipstream now, luckily, Max Power, the legend, comes all across to the left there, sees this happen. The awareness of Max Power there, unbelievable awareness. So we lost nothing there, uh, and we got into the slipstream Max Power. So I back off a little bit here because I knew what was happening. Uh, Sideman backed off as well, but he got absolutely punted from behind. I'm not sure by who, um, if you saw that on the radar. Well, oh, good awareness. And then Mamos goes for an absolute dive down here, which is a bit frustrating. I had to really back out of that because I was in the wall. So it was very frustrating. I did flash my lights there because I, say, I had to back out of that otherwise that was a wall hit. Um, and a bit frustrating, but we continue racing. You know, it wasn't like it was a, a a pile driver into the wall. It was just frustrating. But we continue on through the fast bits, and the German makes a really stunning move here. I really like this move. I think this is super smart because the German's on such fresher tyres. Makes a move beforehand so he can advance further up. It's a really smart move. Now, I advance a bit further on here, and I'm behind C.S. Smith. This is what I'm talking about, racing smart, right? The pack is up ahead. I could race Smith for P7. Or I could push Smith along and we could get in the battle for P2. What is the better option here? Quite clearly, it is the fight for P2. So that's what I'm going for here. So I was hoping behind would push along, but they go for the move instead with the overrun. So I have to move over to the left a little bit here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, like I've been doing throughout this race, is just backing out, coming towards this turn with two cars side by side. It's never, always, never really going to work out well, so we're going to get Smith there. 
I'm looking to try and get Crypto as well because we're just on the inside. We can't really do much. But Crypto, good move. Carried the momentum through that. And uh, we continue on. So now we're behind Crypto. So again, I'm just going to push Crypto all around the lap here. So we get to the hairpin here. We can see a P6, P5. And there's a little bit of gap further ahead. So again, I'm just going to break at my break marker here. Now, unfortunately, Consta hits us from behind. And I'm thinking, at first, I had no idea what was going on. I was like, it's a bit weird because it was a weird hit. And you can see, I was like, I was like, oh my word, why? Could have had a good finish there. And Consta's waited up for me, which is very kind. I, I did uh, uh, um, have a look at Discord and Consta did have a look at Discord after. He, he had a huge lag spike. Literally, all the cars shot off into the distance. And then we all just reappeared in front of him again. And at that point, that's where he hit me. So that's why my car, like, just span around. So it's a bit unfortunate. It is what it is. Sometimes this happens. But uh, there we go. And Quinton, the absolute pleb. But R4M gets the win there. Congratulations, Quinton. Really, really, really well played. Now, I was going to show you my FIA signing manufacturer. However, I'm going to delay this until Tuesday, the 20th of April. Where I will release a short little video of which manufacturer I have signed for. Who is it? I don't know. But meantime, anyway, um, I don't know that. does that even make sense? Thank you so much for watching this weekly race guide as always. Please do subscribe if you want to keep in touch with the content and see my manufacturer choice. Give it a like if you did enjoy the video. And in front of you, you have Ollie's stream if you want to check his stream out tonight. I've got another video there if you want to check another video of mine. Or my logo's there as well, I'll say, if you want to subscribe. But that's going to be it for me now, folks. Thank you so much. Au revoir and farewell.